Hallelujah. You may be seated. Mm. I want, I want y'all to listen to me real good because I really want my Lord and Savior to know how grateful, appreciated that I am. And I want to make sure that you have the same sentiment and you are grateful for what God is doing, what he has done, and what he's going to do. This is just the beginning of things. This is just the beginning of things. Greater is coming, folks. Hallelujah. Greater is coming. But though our beginning was small, our latter ends have greatly increased. But the end revealed is a sure thing. Hallelujah. And so I want to make sure that an angel that is here today that, that they have recorded your praise and your voice of thanksgiving but when a report is made in heaven you want to make sure your name is on that list on that roll that right here 3301 Riverside Drive you are giving God thanks and praise for what he has accomplished and what he has done Amen. Hallelujah. How many know there's an angel right next to you right now? If you're a child of God, then angels are in the room with us. <laughs> mm. The angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him. And, and if God should open your eyes now, you will see a whole host of angels in this place celebrating and praising God. And as we praise God, they praise God for us even more. Hallelujah. They celebrate as we celebrate. Glory to God. So whenever we have an opportunity to get together, don't allow anything to stop you from worshiping God. Most of all, let me say this, most of all, don't let your feelings stop you from praising God. You may, have, you may have come in here hurt. Forget about that for now so you can praise God. I promise you that if you set that aside and just worship, God will take the pain away. He will take the hurt away. Hmm? How many want to reprieve from hurt and from tiredness, and from disappointment? How many of you just tired of yourself? <laughs> Dealing with the flesh, how many just tired of it? You just need a moment of reprieve when you're not wrestling against, you know, the spiritual wickedness and demonic opp oppression and, and depression and and the powers of darkness that is constantly pressing against you. Amen. And let me tell you how, how you separate yourself from that. Just get into the presence of God. Watch this. Because in the presence of God, there's liberty. There's freedom. So if you feel the world coming down on you, it's time to open your mouth and praise Him. It's time to begin to bless Him and to tell Him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, what the devil wants you to do is, is get silent. He wants to shut you down. He wants you to be quiet. But how many know we've got to go against what we're feeling and do what we know? Mm. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that praise silences the avenger. Yeah, he shuts him down. Instead of him shutting you down, you shut him down. <laughs> By just giving God praise and celebrate him and bless his name. Because in the midst of it, he's still good. Hallelujah. 
in the midst of a pandemic, we are still thriving. See, you've got to understand that in the midst of this, some people are just surviving. I mean, just barely enough. But when you're thriving, you've got more than enough. When you're thriving, you are being increased. God is enlarging your capacity. Favor upon you has been increased. Your production has been increased. Your faith has been increased. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm thriving right now. How can I thrive? How can I thrive in the midst of this? Why? Because I see God's hand working in my behalf. I don't know if anybody can see God's hand. I see God's hand working in our behalf. Who you think has been keeping us? You think it's the mask or the sanitizing of your hands? <laughs> Y'all are sadly mistaken if you think that's it. Do all that. Do it. It's good. You do all that. But that's not what's keeping you. Hmm? You think locking your car doors is what's stopping your cars from being stolen? It's the power of God. It's God working on our behalf. It's God intervening every moment of the day. Let me say that again. It's God intervening every moment of the day. There's never a time where God is not watching over you. In the midst of this, watch this, God is still correcting your steps. Because if God was not correcting your steps, some of you would have stepped out a long time ago. Some of you would have misstepped a long time ago, found yourself in difficulties, but because God is directing your step, you have suffered no loss in the midst of a pandemic. Let me say it again. You have suffered no loss in the midst of a pandemic. God has blessed you. Not only do you not suffer loss, you have been increased. See, some of y'all acting like you have not been increased. You have been increased. You may not recognize it, but you've been increased. God just, he had just heaped favor and favor. And every day, every day, his mercies are renewed upon your life. Every day he's recreating something, some blessing for you right now. Each and every day he's heaping, heaping blessings and blessings up on you. Why? Because he's proven himself to you. Come on, lift your hands and understand that God has proven himself to you. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear of how many people dying every day, but God has still kept us in the midst of this. Some churches still have not opened yet. But God has kept us in the midst of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so... I, I don't know about you, but I just want to say, Lord, I thank you so much. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah. If God be for us, no weapon. Hallelujah. You know what that word formed means? It means there is nothing has been forged or created that can harm a person that is protected by God. Get this. See, some of you are looking at it in past tense formed. But no weapon has been forged. That means there is no weapon, it cannot come into existence 
anything that can harm somebody that is protected by God. Are you hearing me? If there was such a thing, then that thing is greater than the power of God. So when the Bible says no weapon that is formed shall prosper, it means there's nothing in creation. Hold on. Hear this real good. Man cannot bring it into existence. The principalities and powers that, that we wrestle with every day cannot bring it into existence. God will not allow anything to come into existence that could harm those that he has divinely protected. We all received that this morning. I want us to have a deeper and a better understanding of this particular scripture. That if God said it, if, he's, if, he, if you are under his protection, you are covered by an unpenetrable shield. Nothing can touch you if God is protecting you. And that's why in this season, we can walk with that level of understanding because that affects our faith. Because when the world is talking about gloom and doom, we are reminded that there's nothing, nothing can come into existence that will harm me when I'm under God's protection. Watch this. That's why scripture says, a thousand shall fall by my side. <laughs> And a whole lot more times a thousand on my left. Ten thousand more. But it won't touch me. Lift up your hands like this. Stretch your hands out. So all the inventions of the adversary... It will get this close to you, but can't touch you. Come on, look at it. They're right there, but they can't touch you. Are you hearing me? Come on, somebody shout, no weapon. Hmm. Hmm. So no matter where I go, no matter what the atmosphere, what the environment, no matter where I am, I am walking in the protection of God. So whether I'm in the house of God, whether I'm in Costco, whether I'm on the super, wherever it is, on the job, if God is my shield, somebody shout no weapon. Hallelujah. It's time that we raise the level of faith we walk in. That when God has called us to go forth, we go forth. Because if God is calling you to share a word with somebody, a lot of folks are afraid to step and to share a word because of fear. But I want you to understand that if God is protecting you, you have nothing to fear. If God be for us, Let's say, what can be against us? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I'm giving God thanks and I'm giving God praise. Because in spite of what people say, or people try to prophesy to you about your future, God's purpose is being established in your life if you will trust him. You all received that. If you will trust him, his purpose will be established in your life. So watch this, because a lot of us are dealing with things that people have said about you, and you allow those things to hold you back and hold you down. But if you have the understanding that whom God has blessed, no man can curse. So watch this. So if you're dealing with those things, then you need to let those things go and cause your mind to be transformed. Because you should get it in your spirit right now that when people say you're not going to make it, you've got to hear what God is saying about the situation. And if God is saying you shall live and not die, it doesn't matter what people got to say about you. 
doesn't matter what the adversary is doing. It doesn't matter how he hates you because he can't stop your blessing. I want us to understand that I'm blessed and I cannot be cursed. So I don't care what people have got to say. I don't care what man is saying because I'm blessed and it cannot be reversed. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? If you are blessed, you must walk with the understanding that I don't fear man's mouth. Let me say it again. I don't fear man's mouth because my blessing cannot be reversed. You can't take it away. You cannot will it away. No witchcraft or demonic power can reverse the blessing that God has on my life. And you've got to walk in that level of faith and understanding that let folks pray their prayers. Let them do what they do. But when you walk in the knowledge and the understanding that they cannot touch you, <laughs> because, because I'm blessed, it cannot be reversed. Because the power of God is upon my life. Hallelujah. Wasn't it Balaam that was paid to curse the children of Israel? But every time he stood up to open his mouth, all he can do is come in agreement with the blessing that's already on the people of God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands if you are blessed. Lift your hands if you're on the purpose and the protection of God. I'm here to tell somebody, stop your worrying. Stop your worrying. Hallelujah. Living word, we have nothing to worry about. The Bible says he prepares a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with all till my cup runs over. Hallelujah. And because of that, surely, 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 for sure, tell somebody, say, for sure, goodness and mercy is following after me all the days of my life. Tell somebody, say, all the day, not just yesterday, but every single day, I have the blessings of God going before me. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No weapon. Somebody shout, no weapon. I realize that in this season, a lot of folks are, are, are subdued because of fear. And it's understandable because you hear how many people are dying, how many people are sick and all this stuff. You know, I mean, some of you work in the front line, so you, you're able to see it. You hear of loved ones and this person and that one that have, that have gone on because of what's happening in the world today. But as a child of God, it is time for us to change the narrative that hangs around us. Let me say it again. You may not change the narrative, narrative of the world, but the word that hangs in your atmosphere better be a word of God because the Bible said if it's not of faith, then it's of sin. And so if you're allowing a doubt or fear to dwell in your atmosphere, you're literally walking in sin. Are you hearing me? That's how serious it is. I refuse to walk in sin, for the Bible said I should live by faith. We walk by what? Faith and not by sight. You and I are called to walk in an environment. Touch, touch somebody, say create an environment of faith. Simply means that each and every day I'm speaking forth faithful words, right? That's going to create the atmosphere that I dwell in. Hallelujah. For without faith, it's impossible for us to please God. So if I'm going to be pleasing to God, and if, and, and if my life today and my atmosphere today is an atmosphere that is pleasing God, then I must be walking in faith. I don't know about you, but I need God in my atmosphere, in my environment every day. And so in order to do that, I must be walking in faith. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got to walk in faith. Because it takes your faith to please God. Hallelujah. So when the world is speaking a negative narrative, I am going to release. Touch somebody say, I'm going to release words of faith and affirmation over my life. I refuse to be held back or held down. I refuse to have folks put limits on me. Let me say that again. I refuse to allow people to put limits on me 
or because I'm of such a, diff, a, a certain color, I can't achieve certain things. I want you to say the devil is a serious liar. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because we're small, it doesn't mean that we're not strong. Are you hearing me? Just because we're small, it doesn't mean we're not strong. I remember in high school on the wrestling team, we had a, a short guy. He was about this short. He couldn't be no more than maybe five feet tall. He was very short. And so um, he wrestled. I forgot the, the weight he wrestled that. But every time he went to wrestle, because they took one look at him, and you can see a smirk on their face like, yeah, I'm going to whip him. But, but he was so strong, he very rarely lost. They mistook him. They just looked at his statue and felt he was not strong. But after he pinned them, they realized how strong he was. Don't let nobody look at you. And people will look at you and create their own impression of who they think you are. Simply because of what you look like. Because of the clothes you wear or what you drive or, you know, how you speak. They have their own impression. But they really don't know what is going on on the inside. They really don't understand that inside that you are a child of God. They don't understand that great is he that is in you. I'm here to talk to somebody here this morning. This is not even part of my sermon, but I just want to share this just for a few minutes. For I remember, and I'm just going to share, I remember that that when, when my father died and I just took over the church and somebody said to me, in one year, you're going to be done. One year. You're going to fall flat on your face. Because they said I didn't know what I was doing. Well, you know what? They were right about one thing. I did not know what I was doing. But God knew what he was doing. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And tell you the truth, I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trusting God. And God is just accomplishing it. God is just doing it. Amen. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you may not know what you're doing, but, but as long as God knows what he's doing, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 11. We're going to talk about this this morning. Amen. Praise God. God is so awesome. He is so awesome. Isn't he good? Genesis chapter 11. We we'll talk about the power of unity, and we we still talking about how to make the church great again, because we really want the anointing of God back in the house of God. Am I right? Amen. Amen. You know, in in prayer, I said that I want us to have an outdoor uh, revival and deliver healing and deliverance service outside. You know, put some tents out there, whatever it is, and have the service outside. But I said to the prayer team, we must pray because before we go out, it must happen in here. Amen. Because I refuse to go to the outside without the authority and the power that is necessary. And for I refuse to bring shame to the kingdom of heaven. I'm not going to advertise a healing deliverance service that nobody gets healed and delivered. Are you hearing me? Judgment must first begin where? In the house of God. And so the church of God, the people of God, our faith must get to that level that what we are praying for, it happens in here so then we can take it to the world. What were you talking about, Pastor? On the day of Pentecost, where were they? In, the upper room. in one place, together. Am I right? What took place on one accord? What took place while they were together? The Holy Spirit came upon them in the house. Amen? 
And when they, because it took place in the house, now they were ready to go out the house. And when they went out the house, they were still worshiping and praising God, demonstrating the power that fell upon them in the house. It begins in the house. And so we got to come together on one accord for the power of God to fall upon us so that when we go out the house, people would hear us and hear the celebration. For the Bible says that they heard people praising and celebrating God in their own language to the point, remember Peter, Peter was anointed in the house, the same Peter that was afraid, the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. But when he came together in the house with the people of God and the blessings of God came down upon him in the house, when he went outside the house, he no longer was fearful. Peter, Peter, the, Peter when he first preached, he denied Jesus. But after the anointing of God came up on him, his next message now was celebrating Jesus. His first sermon outside the house, after he was anointed in the house, won 3,000 souls to God. Such a neighbor to neighbor, we need the anointing of God in the house. We need the power of God in the house so we can take it out the house. Amen. You know, we've been speaking of, for, for two, three years now that there's not a feeble one among us, but we're what? We're healthy. We're what? Wealthy and not a feeble one among us. Come on, say it again. Not a feeble one among us, but we are what? Healthy, wealthy, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. And let me, let, me, let me share this with you because a lot of us don't really understand that God has given us this word and prepared the environment for us to dwell in and to be preserved in in the midst of this mess that was going on. Amen? And God has kept us. That word right there has been established in your life. Even if you don't understand it, even though you don't recognize it, that one word right there has been established in your life. You are healthy. I didn't hear no amen. Are you healthy? As a church, are we a healthy church? All right. Now we're moving to a place where we become a wealthy church. For there's not a feeble one among us. No feeble one among us. Simple means there is no weak links. Everybody in their right place at the right time. Everybody do what they're supposed to do. And there is no weakness among us. This is how the word of God is working among us in succession. No weakness. He's removing the weakness. He's getting the weakness out of your mind and raising up some people who are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The people that would say, I know I can do this. I know we can do this. I know we can accomplish what needs to be accomplished. Some people that will say there's nothing too big for God, and because there's nothing too big for God, there's nothing too big for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, there is no weak one among us. But we are healthy. Touch somebody, say, I'm healthy. Watch this now, and God, God has created an atmosphere for us to move to where we are wealthy people. All right, I see y'all don't, if y'all don't want to be wealthy, y'all sit and be quiet. But God has created an atmosphere. He is moving us along. If He's progressively blessing us, progressively receive, releasing information, knowledge, and understanding to bring us to a place that, that we have been professing for the last three, four years. Hallelujah. That word that you've been professing, if you begin to believe God and do what God tells you to do, every part of that word will be established in your life. Anybody receive that prophetic word? Let me say it again. Every part of that prophetic word must be established in your life. Now, there is not a feeble one among us, but we're healthy. That must be established. Tell somebody say, it must be established. We're healthy. We are wealthy. It must be established. 
Lift up your hands and say, I'm strong in the Lord. It must be established. We've been speaking that word for years now. It must be established. It will be established. God watches over his word to what? Perform it. And because God has given us that rhema word and we have not forgotten it, we have not allowed that word to depart from our eyes, but we're consistently speaking it, we are walking in it right now. Come on, lift your hand and give God thanks. We are walking in the fulfillment of the Word of God. If you can't see it, I'm asking God to open your eyes so you can see what God has been doing in our lives. What God has been doing for us as a church, we ought to give God thanks because God is not only blessing the church, He's blessing your individual lives. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I know that the adversary, he's not particularly pleased. <laughs> and so he will cause stuff to happen in your life. And he caused stuff to, to distract you. Thank you, Mom. But if you stay focused, keep your eyes on the Lord. Peter was only able to walk on water as long as his eyes was on the Lord. For the moment he took his eyes off the Lord, he lost faith. Faith requires you putting your eyes on Jesus and keeping it there in spite of what's going on around you. Hallelujah. Listen, and when you do that, people may not understand you because your emotions is not going to be according to what people think they should be. So when people think you should be crying, you are worshiping, you're celebrating God, people will think something is wrong with you. You let them know, there ain't nothing wrong with me. This is just the power of God because I refuse to let Satan stop what God is doing in my life. I refuse to allow him to cause me to take my eyes off Jesus because I'm looking for my tomorrow. I'm looking for my greater, and I refuse to allow today to stop my blessing or to hinder what God is trying to accomplish in my life. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? In order for us to move on, we've got to shut down, shut our eyes to the distraction. And don't let people get you distracted. Don't let stuff get you distracted. Keep your mind on the things of the path that God has set you on, and he will bring it to pass. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. And let him direct your path. How many know God wants to do it in your life right now? Right now. Right now, God wants to do it in your life. God wants to do something significant in your life, but we've got to get ourselves out the way so God can move according to his design. How many of God has a design that he wants to establish in your life? But you just got to get yourself out the way so God can move in your life. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go to Genesis 11 and 6 because this is talking about the church in general. At one time, the whole earth spoke the same language. And this is the message version, but let me switch to um, the New Living Translation. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. All the people migrated to the east. They found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. And they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches onto the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to take a look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united. They all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. I want you all to focus on, on verse 6. Look, he said, the people are united. <laughs> they all say the same thing. They all speak the same language. After this, somebody said after this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Let me read the message version secondly here. Amen. 
Come, let us go down. Uh, verse 6, God took one look and said, one people, one language. Why? This is only the first step. Touch somebody and say, this is, only, this is only the first step. No telling what they will come up with next. They'll stop at nothing. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, when we are united, nothing can stop us. Let me say it again. When we are united, nothing, somebody say nothing, can stop us. Let me get the amplified version. I want to read this one more time because I want us to get this in our spirit. And the Lord said, behold, there are one people. And they have all one language. This is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Let me say that one more time. This is only the beginning. Somebody shout, this is only the beginning. Only the beginning. Nothing that we have imagined will be impossible for us. Let me say that again. This is only, lift up your hands and say, this is only the beginning. the beginning. Nothing that we have imagined will be impossible for us. But what created that environment? What created the environment where a, a people can come together and build so much so that it got God's attention? I want you all to know something, that unity, unity gets God's attention. When the people are one, and watch this, I want us to understand this, and that's the first topic of the first, you know, bullet point. Unity gets God's attention. Even though they were doing something out of the will of God, God was amazed at their unity. He was so amazed at their unity that he said, because they are one, Nothing will be impossible unto them. But what is the character of this oneness? The character of this oneness is that they all were saying the same thing. They're always saying, we can do this. <laughs> wow, did y'all get that? They're always saying, let us do this. They're always saying, we can accomplish this. They're always saying, we can make it. They all were saying, we are together and there's nothing too hard for us. Oh, you got to get this this morning. They were outside the will of God, but because of their oneness, what they were about to do, they would have accomplished if God had not put a stop to it. How did he put a stop to it? He simply put a stop to it by causing division, change their language. Simply means they could no longer talk the same thing or, or say the same thing. And so when, when we're not saying the same thing and off the same language, then that causes division. Oh, glory to God. But if Living Word Christian Center is going to get to that place that God wants us, we've got to begin to say the same thing. We've got to walk in the same mindset. We've got to say, I know we can do it. I know the mountain may look large, but we are more than able. Somebody lift their hands and give God praise and say, we are more than able. Why? Because God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, let us stand together. Because if we stand together, nothing is impossible unto us. Anybody believe that this morning? Mm. Those of you who, who go to the gym and, and work out, you know, you can, they, they have, you know, barbells and, and, or the dumbbells in different weights and different sizes. Now, I can pick up a 10-pound dumbbell with one finger. I simply hook my one finger around it and pick it up. But if I, I cannot do the same with a 100-pound dumbbell, that one finger by itself can't pick it up. But if I join my whole hands together, I can lift it up. Are you understand what I'm saying? So by yourself, you are limited. 
But when you get together with somebody else and as a church, what, what you cannot do by yourself, you are more than able to do when, you, when we come together as the people of God. I want to preach to somebody this morning because, see, we, God is not, not calling us to be lone rangers. God is calling us to come together as one. And when we are united as one, we get God's attention. Touch somebody, touch somebody say, I need God's attention in our lives. Because when God sees what we're doing and he blesses it, then there is no end to what we can accomplish. But we must come together as one. Come on, lift up your hands and give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unity attracts God's favor and God's anointing. Let me say it again. Unity attracts God's favor and God's anointing. Go to Psalms 133 real quick. Psalms, Behold and how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? In unity. It's like the precious ointment poured upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest that came down upon the collar and the skirts of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, but it goes on and says, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing. For the Lord has what? Commanded what? The blessing, even life evermore. Simply means where there is unity, God commands his blessing. Oh, glory to God. God would say, bless them, bless the ones, bless those who are walking in unity. There's a command upon the blessing that God will release upon the church when we are walking as one. Oh, glory to God. I know we're trying to seek God for greater things, but we've got to come together. we got to do it as one. We've got to worship as one, praise God as one, say one thing, have one mind, one spirit. Hallelujah. We are living word nation God has called us at a time such as this and God says that when we come together as one his anointing will come upon us and when his favor and his anointing come upon us he said then I will command my blessing hallelujah, hallelujah. God said, I'm going to command my blessing. What does that mean? It's such as this. Remember when the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that the earth was with our form and void and darkness covered the face of the earth. What did God do? He spoke a word. He commanded something to take place. He said, let there be light. And all of a sudden light showed up. I'm here to tell somebody that when God speaks towards you, he commands things to come into existence in your life. What has been missing when God gets when you get God's attention oh glory to God when the earth was without form and void and darkness on the face of the earth God took a look at it oh glory to God when he took a look at it he began to talk to the situation he commanded his blessing he said let there be light and there was light ah, let me remind living word Christian center God is waiting to command his blessing at a whole another level. All we've got to do is worship as one. God is about to command his blessing upon us when we walk as one, talk as one. Hallelujah. When we shut down the gossip, when we shut down the naysaying, when we walk in the confidence of what God is doing in this particular time in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory, this is the time where the people of God, living word, come together and just celebrate God. You may not understand everything that is going on, but don't talk against it. You may not understand everything that God is doing, but just celebrate it. God may choose somebody to bless. Just celebrate with them as God is blessing them. For when you celebrate their blessing, God may just bless you. But when you try to talk about the
Where there's unity, there's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in full operation. Hallelujah. It is time for the church to come together and make the church great again to a place where the church becomes relevant again. Hallelujah. The neighborhood will want to run to the church because they are sick. They are demon possessed. They understand that something is in the house of God. Hallelujah. The church must once again become the hospital of the neighborhood. Neighborhood, that sick people come in and be healed. The lame walk, the dumb talk, blind eyes are open. We are calling on God to do something fresh, something new in the house. We are calling on God for a move of God, but a move can't happen until God gets your attention. He gets your attention when we walk in unity, when we walk in oneness, then God will get oh glory to God. Oh God will see what we're doing. And God will say, let's go down and see what has taken place in Living Word Christian Center. The Bible said God came down and took a look. I don't know about you, but I need God to come take a look. Lift those hands one more time and say, Lord, thank you. Mm. Watch this. Lift those hands and say thank you. We're still not one yet. See? You know I know? Because everybody didn't do it. So we, we're missing. We're totally missing. I'm preaching unity and oneness, and we're not getting it. You know, when I was going to ministerial training, they told us we have to preach the same sermon seven times for most people to get it. I'm too old to be preaching the same sermon seven times. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you. Come on, everybody. Everybody, lift their hands and say, Lord, thank you. Now open your mouth. See, some of us only go halfway. You lift your hands, but you're not opening your mouth. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? We still not getting it. We still don't understand how God moves. We still don't understand how God moves. We still don't understand how to get the power of God released among us and upon the church. We've got to come together as one. When we operate in unity, we get God's attention. Come on, everybody lift both hands and just say, Lord, thank you. Somebody's about to be delivered right here. Somebody in your household is going to be delivered. Why? Because the church is just giving God thanks in unison. Come on, say, Lord, thank you. Come on, Lord, I bless your name. I, I praise your name because you are good. Hallelujah. Now, come on, open your mouth and just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, touch your neighbor, say, neighbor. Unity gets God's attention and releases the anointing in our midst. How many need an anointing of God right now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, open, lift your hands like this and Lord, thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing, God. Thank you for pouring fresh oil upon my head. Fresh oil upon my life. Fresh anointing upon my life. God's ab about to raise this church up. We've been praying for a move of God. It's going to happen, but we need to accelerate it. I don't want to pray for a whole nother year with people who are divided and can't see God moving. I, I promise you, if we right now, right now, just come together as one and say, God, we need a move. God will, heaven will open. Heaven will open immediately. And we see God show up like never before. Hallelujah. If we could just get together right here, right now, we will see the move of God. If we can just worship together and let self be slain and let God be praised.
we will see the move of God taking place in the house right now. Hallelujah. 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 Unity gets God's attention and releases the power, releases the anointing in our midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I've come to understand <laughs> we have allowed, hear me real good, we've allowed the blessings of God to make us independent individuals. Because we drive in our own cars. We live in our own homes. And we pay our own bills. We don't no longer know what unity is. We work on a job, but we're really not united with our co-workers. You're really just doing it because you're getting paid. Co-workers on your job, you can't stand. They can't stand you, you can't stand them. Hmm? And you've been socialized in that for years and years and years. That's your mindset. If it is to be, it's up to me. That's our mindset. We are all individuals. But in the kingdom of God, it doesn't work like that. Jesus said, make us one. As he and the Father are one. There are no lone rangers in the church of God. The Bible said we are one body. We must come together and function as one. Hallelujah. Every part of your body has a purpose, has its own purpose, its own function, but it's still part of the body. The eye can't do what the legs do. The legs can't do what the hands do. But it's part of the same body. And when we, when your body's working together and function together, it, it can accomplish great things. Hallelujah. And so God has to bring us out of the independent mindset and bring us back to a place where together, together we do and we accomplish and we worship and we bless God. That's why the Bible says, you see what the adversary is doing. The Bible says, do not forsake the coming together. Do not forsake the assembling together. You know what that means? That means don't stop coming together. Why? Because that will break the power of independence. So what the adversary wants to do, he wants to keep you by yourself in your kitchen while you're cooking ackee and sawfish. While you're mowing the grass or while you're out playing golf. And you know, and you may tune in or your, your, your iPad or your phone may be tuned in, but you're not tuned in. Hmm? I know I'm telling the truth up in here. We're not really tuned in because we're distant. There's some people who don't have churches and places, and I understand that. There's some people way out there who have nothing going on, and so they are absolutely tuned in because that's all they have. But the adversary wants to take the body of Christ and separate the body. Why? Because then nobody can get really edified. There's no one to sharpen yourself with. And so the devil will have you watching but not connecting. And then, and then the people, even the people of God will say, Oh, this is the new norm. The devil is a liar. Don't listen to him. Don't let the world describe to you what the new norm is. It may be the norm for the world, but it ain't norm for the kingdom of heaven. Hmm? God always has a place, place where he meet his people. In the desert, it was a tabernacle. Oh, glory to God. When they came together as a nation, they had the synagogue, they had the temple, they had the place of worship always. And the power, I'm reminded that when Solomon prayed, the glory of God filled the house that the ministers couldn't even minister. Why? Because the people came together to do what? Worship and praise. 
of the Almighty God. Church, let me say this again. When we come together in unity, it gets God's attention. And then the anointing is poured out upon us. I'm tired of praying about the same thing. I'm tired of singing the same song. We need a move, God. We need a move. Some of us singing it and some of us, our minds is way out there somewhere. Oh, I'm so tired of that song. Ain't no move happening. Hmm? Why? Because we're not one. And when the church comes together as one, we're going to see God move. <laughs> Let me give you something to think about. Maybe we have 150 persons here, 130 persons here. What would it be? What do you think would happen if we all showed up here at 5 o'clock one morning to pray? If when I looked, I had my musicians at 5 o'clock, I had my praise team at 5 o'clock, I had my leaders, my, my board of directors, my department heads, if we all were here as one, do you think anything could stop us? Do you think anything could stop us? We're not one, folks. We have the semblance of one. The semblance of it. But we're not truly one as a church yet. It's still just a few that is calling out to God. When, when the word has gone out for us to come together, it's still only a few. Still only a few. Because it's not convenient for most of us. Five o'clock is inconvenient. Seven o'clock, you're tired. And noon, you're at work, so you can't even get on the prayer line. So now, what is essential for the move of God, most of us are not walking in it. And it's just a few holding the burden, carrying it, to, carrying the cross of Jesus, just a few. Mm. Just a few. Imagine if the, the church will come together. Say, Pastor, we are here with you. We're here. We, I know we're tired. I know it's this. I, but you know what? I, I want to make sure that I'm here. I want to make sure that I'm coming together so my brothers and my sisters may be encouraged with my presence. And I know this may not be factual, but sometimes I feel it's just a few that are here that are praying. Why? That's all I see. Let me say it again. That's all I see. And unless you call and tell me that faster I'm praying, I'm at work, but I'm praying, I'm doing this, I'm praying. I don't see it. Nothing encourages more than me seeing and hearing you praying. Sometimes I'm kneeling right there, and I'm not praying. You know what I'm doing? I'm listening to your prayer. And this church is going to be transformed when we get it as a people. It's not just the intercessors are supposed to be praying. Everybody, the music ministry, they are ministers. The ushers, the, the, the greeters, they are ministers. They're at the, they're, they get to meet people I don't get to meet. And if they don't have the right spirit, people get turned off at the door. Everybody, we must come together as one, as the people of God. We must just say, all right, pastor said we're going to be here at 5 o'clock. You know what? Let me just go. 
Let me just get up at 4 o'clock. I know I've got to get to work at 7, but you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm going to get dressed for work and go pray. Why? Because we must come together as one. Hmm? And if you can't get up a fine, then make sure that at 7 you're here or, or noon you're on the prayer line. But we got to come together as one. We want the lame to walk. We want the... But God will not... Listen, and I thank God for how he is. I thank God because he's such a merciful and a loving God. And he hears the prayer of the few. But imagine if it was the prayer of the mass and the majority. Hmm? You know, there are places that, that when the pastor calls for prayer, you know, hundreds of people show up and pray five, six, seven hours. In those churches, the whole neighborhood is saved. Folks are healed, delivered, set free. Because a praying church is an unstoppable church. Praying people are unstoppable people. People who come together as one. Nothing is impossible unto us. Such a pleasure to be able to bring the word of God to you today on this beautiful Valentine's Day 2021. And I pray that as you have heard the word today, your hearts and your mind is transformed into loving God even more and loving your brothers and sisters even more. Take some time out today, show some love to that special person and cause them to feel and to remember that you still love them. And I pray that if this ministry been a blessing to you, we ask now that you be a blessing to our ministry. We're in the place of purchasing this beautiful property that we're on. And so if we've been a blessing to you, please sow into our ministry and may God continue to bless you. And we love you with the love of the Lord.